Welcome back to our series of introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter, and this is lecture video number five. So when you're saving your lecture notes in the Google Drive, make sure that you're naming them consistently so that they end up being in order from one to nine. So you need the word lecture, and then you can say notes or not, but you definitely need the nine. And then after that, you can say whatever you want in the name, but make sure that you have the lecture and the nine, or LN9, or something like that. Make them consistent so uh, they're in order. Okay? All right. Now, last section, so a couple of videos, we did measures of central tendency. So we talked about the mode, and that is either the value or values that occur the most number of times. Okay? The median, it's the middle value of the data. So we have to take the data, put it in order from smallest to largest, and then right in the middle, either the middle value, if there's an odd number of uh, values in the sample, or we take the two middle values and average them if we have an even number of values in the data set. Once we've ordered them from smallest to largest, we know how many there are, that's n. We can add one to it and divide by two and that will tell us exactly where that value is, you know, numbering from 1 to n. All right. But it's not the median. This value is not the median. So please make sure you keep that straight. Look back at that video if you don't remember. The average of all the values is simply the average. We know how to do that. We take all the values, we add them up, divide by how many we have. Here's the formula. It says this symbol says sum the x's. x are our individual values, so we sum up them all, or total them, and divide by n how many we have, which is how many we have. A k percent trim mean, we do the same thing as we did here, except first we're going to throw away k percent of the highest values and k percent of the lowest values. And then the values that are left, we're simply going to add them up and divide by how many are left. That's a trimmed mean. A weighted mean is where we give different weights to each of the values. And so what we do first is we take each weight times the value, and then we multiply those. And then after we've multiplied them, we add them all up, and then divide by how many total, uh, the total of the weights. Okay. So now let's move into section two, measures of variation. We're going to talk about the range, variance, and standard deviation. The objectives or goals for this section is that we want to understand how to describe the variation of either a sample or population. A distribution usually describes a population, but it can describe a sample. Uh, and a data set definitely describes a sample. So we're going to talk about the range, standard deviation, and variance, as I just mentioned. We also want to learn how to compare the variation between two populations or two samples and that have different um, standard deviations or variances. And so this is called a measure of relative uh, variation when we do that. And, then, and that'll be in another video, not today. And then uh, we want to be able to calculate the minimum proportion of a population or a sample that is within k standard deviations of the mean. We'll talk about more of what that uh, is trying to describe in a future video. This is called Chebyshev's theorem. Okay, let's start with the simplest value uh, way of describing the variation in the data, and that's called the range. And so the range is simply the maximum or largest value minus the minimum or smallest value. And it's very easy to calculate, but uh, we'll learn the disadvantage in just a minute. Here's a sample. I've ordered the data from smallest to largest. That makes it very easy to calculate the range. So I simply take a 4 and I subtract a negative 1. Well, when I subtract a negative value, it becomes a positive. So this is 4 minus negative 1 is actually 5, not 3, but 5. So the answer is 5. And in another example, we take the largest, 100, subtract 5, that's 95. So if you have any doubts, use your calculator. 4 minus negative 1 will give you a 5. The advantage, again, it's easy to calculate or to find. The disadvantages, it's very sensitive to extreme values. In fact, 
it only uses extreme values to calculate the range. We use the largest value and the smallest value. Um, and it doesn't provide us any information about how the distribution uh, is shaped or how the data is shaped or the shape of the data. And we'll talk about one that will in just a minute. Okay. So the standard deviation is a uh, very popular measure of variation. And we can calculate this either for a sample or for a population. And unlike the mean, you will not get the same answer. If you think that it's a sample, when in fact it's a population, um, you're going to get a larger value than you should because the sample standard deviation uh, calculation, this formula, will give you a smaller value than this formula because, I'm sorry, a larger value than this formula because this value is smaller on the bottom. So we divide by a smaller number, we get a bigger number. So the sample uh, standard deviation is bigger than the population uh, standard deviation if we're calculating this on the same values. Okay, so what is it? Well, it's like an average distance uh, away from the mean. It's the average, it's like, it's not an average, but it's like the average distance that each value is away from the mean. So you might want to write that down. Uh, you want to have a, a concept of this, okay? So um, we're going to take each value, we're going to subtract its mean. If it's a sample, we're going to take x minus x bar, the sample mean. If it's a population, we'll take each value and subtract the population mean, mu. So each of the, for, so we're going to take the difference between each value and the mean, and then we're going to square it. So if it was negative, it doesn't matter. It's going to become positive once we square it. Okay. So all of these values in the numerator are positive. So we add up a bunch of positive numbers, and then we subtract by n minus 1. n is always positive, and it better be bigger than 1. So this number down here is always positive. So under the square root, we're always going to have a positive number. If you don't get that, you have made a mistake. Now, we don't actually use this formula to do any calculations. Your book might ask you to at a time or not, or to, but in real life, we never do. In fact, the calculator and the computers use this formula here. Notice that this is an equal sign. This formula and this formula are really the same thing, but they're in a different format, so to speak. So they'll give you exactly the same answer if you do them right. This one can be very messy because you can't round any of these differences that you've squared until you get to the end. That's messy and hard to use many times if you have decimal places. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this formula or this formula, depending on whether it's a sample or a population. In real life, you, you hardly ever have a population. It's almost always a sample. So we take n times uh, the sum of x squared. And we'll go over how to do this in just a minute. But we're going to square each of the values, then add them up. And here we're summing all the values first and then squaring that total. And then we take n times this minus this squared divided by n and n times n minus 1, both n and n minus 1 on the bottom. Over here we get almost the same equation except we're using capital N, the um, population size instead of the sample size. And since we don't have n minus 1 over here, we just have n. We end up with n squared on the bottom instead of n times n minus 1. Okay, let's do an example. Or, well, first, let's talk about the advantages. Um, unlike the range that only uses uh, two values from the data, this uses all of the values. Uh, the range is in the same units as the data, but the standard deviation is as well. And so that's a big advantage as well. So because we're taking the square root here at the end, we end up uh, right back with the same units. The disadvantages is that it's more difficult to calculate than many of the other measures of uh, variation. Uh, and it's also still sensitive to extreme values, but not nearly as much as the uh, range, right? Okay. Also note that if I have s, I know the variance, which is going to be s squared for the sample. For the population, the variance is going to be sigma squared. Uh, the variance, since you're taking the same units as the um, data and then squaring it, you're going to end up with square units, whatever those units are, 
for the variance. So it's not the same for the variance, s squared or sigma squared. You do not have the same units as you do in the data. Okay, finally our example. So we have this data set with two, four, six values in it. I wanted to do something short. The first thing you do is you write x and then you write all the values from smallest to largest. Even though we have repeats, we have to write it every single time that we have one. And then each of these values, so below it we put x squared. So we're going to square this value. So 2 becomes 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 8 squared is 64, and 10 squared is 100. Now we add up the top and we add up of the sum of x's and we add up x squares. And so this value is the sum of x and this is the sum of x squared. So let's, we then, the next step is you write down your formula. For all of your homework, all of your tests, you need to write down the formula. If you don't, I will take off points. Writing down the formula helps people not mess up plugging into it. So we write down s is equal to the square root of all of this from our formula sheet. And then we plug in. n is how many we have, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so we put in a 6. The sum of x's is this bottom number here. So 286. And then we take and we put in the plug, plug in so the sum of x. That's this top number, which is 36. And then we square it. Okay. So you'll notice that um, uh, take your calculator and square 36. And you get 1296, right? So 1296 is not equal to 286, is it? So you can't take a shortcut. Some students think that these are the same numbers here, but they're not. The sum of x squared is not equal to um, the sum of x quantity squared. All right. So there, this is the shortest way to do it. The easiest way to do it is what I'm showing you. I would show you an easier way if, if it existed. Okay. So I've plugged in that. I've plugged in n, which is 6, and then n minus 1, 6 minus 1. So this is 6, and this is 5. 6 times 5 is 30. And 6 times 286 is 1716. And 36 squared is 1296. I subtract these values on the top. I get 420 divided by 30. You can definitely divide um, the zeros out, you know, so you have 42 over 3, which is 14. So we take the square root of 14 and we get this large number, and we're going to use something called the round off rule. Oops, it's not here. And the round off rule says that every calculation we make, we use one more decimal place than we had in the data. So here we had zero decimal places in the data. So now we're going to use one decimal place in the answer. So that's a 3.7. This is the answer you would report, 3.7. Now, if it were a population instead of a sample, we would use a different formula. So again, write down your formula and then plug in. So we're going to plug in. So n is going to be the same, 6. The sum of x squared is going to be the same. The sum of the quantity x, which is 36 squared, that's going to be the same. And But what's different is on the bottom. Instead of having 6 times 5, we're going to have 6 times 6. So we get 420 over 36. This is the square root of 11 and 2 thirds. Notice that this bar means that the 6's keep on going forever. So when I take the square root, I have to leave this 11.6666666 in my calculator, take the square root, I get 3.416. I'm rounding this to one more decimal place than I had in my data, so it's 3.4. So instead of getting 3.7, I get 3.4. That's a pretty big difference in these two numbers. Okay, now if I want the variance for the sample, I square, notice that I'm squaring 14, I get, um, the square root of 14, I get 14.0 exactly. And when I square the square root of 11.6666, I get that whatever's under the square root is my variance. So the value here under the square root is my variance. And now I take and I 
round that to one decimal place in both cases. And so those are the values I get. Again, they're different. And I've written out the round off rule here. Make sure that you do not round until you get to the final answer. Otherwise, you may get a wrong answer. And so here's the case. So if I ask you for the standard deviation of the sample, and we gave, if you remember, let's see, we gave 3.4, uh, 3.7, okay, for the sample, 3.4 for the population. Oh, sorry. So if you square 3.4, it gives you 11.56. That rounds to 11.6, which is wrong. It's supposed to be 11.7. You tried the same thing for S squared. Oops, I'm sorry. So try uh, squaring 3.7 and see if you get 14 or not. You may, you may not. I haven't done it. Okay, so um, that's the end of this lecture video. Remember to scan your lecture notes before midnight on the due date that's listed on the course calendar. Okay, so if this is listed on a certain day, you have until 11.59 p.m. that night to finish this. Please make these neat notes neat for you. Hopefully you're finished by now when you get to this point. Make sure that you've updated your formula sheet with the standard deviation for, and variance for both the uh, population and the sample and the range. Make sure you put that on there too. If you have questions, please come to virtual office hours. If you can't come to virtual office hours, please email me. I'm happy to help you. Um, just make sure I know which class you're in and what uh, question you're trying to ask. And I will see you next time.